Um, I hope you can hear me. Um, all right, today's Psalm, as Pastor said, I'll be reading the Psalm. So today's Psalm is Psalm 13. We're going to read it from the NIV. Uh, please turn in your Bibles or you can look at the screen. It's in the NIV version that I'm going to read. Psalms 13. How long, O oh Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I take my counsel in my soul? Having sorrow in my heart daily, how long will my enemies be exalted over me? Consider and hear me, O Lord, my God. Enlighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemies say I have prevailed against him. Lest those who trouble me rejoice when I, have, I am moved. But I have trusted in your mercy. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has done, dealt bountifully with me. Praise the Lord, brothers. Psalm 13, a psalm of David. Um, before I start with the psalm exhortation, I have a request for prayer at the end. Maybe Pastor could pray. Um, my brother, Jamon Kurubila, Pastor Jamon Kurubila uh, in Dubai, his wife has been tested positive for COVID-19. And so afford her in your prayers. And uh, Jamon also has started showing symptoms since last night. So uphold them in your prayer as well. So with that, Psalms 90. How long, O oh Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long will my enemy be exalted over me? You know, we live in a time of instant gratification. We have questions. We want answers immediately. Uh, you know, we, uh, we live in a time of uh, information. Information is at the tip of our fingers. So if you have a question, you go find the answer. And uh, if you want somebody to answer your question, you send them an email. And you wait for about 24 hours and you say, you know what, no response. So I'm going to text that person. And you text that person. And then if you don't hear from that person, then you immediately pick up the phone and call the person and say, hey man, what happened? I didn't hear from you. See, if a person doesn't respond to the phone call either, now what, we, what do we conclude? We conclude saying that, you know what, this person may not be interested in working with me. You know, let me go into plan B or plan C or plan D, whichever plan you are at that time. We move on with our life because what? We are living in a time when we want answers quickly. And uh, if we don't get answers, we find answers somewhere else. And here is the Psalm of David. The Psalm David is asking, how long, how long, O oh Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long? It's a psalm of desperation, a psalm of anguish, a psalm of frustration. He's waiting upon God to answer, and God has not answered him for a long time. You know, the background of the psalm is this, that David killed Goliath, and, uh, uh, and uh, you know, is, uh, when he killed Goliath, people started singing, David's praises. You know, the people started saying, David, uh, Saul killed his thousands and David his tens of thousands. And when Saul heard this, Saul, the great king of Israel, when he heard this, the Bible says he was filled with jealousy and he wanted to kill David. One day Saul threw a spear at him to pin him to the wall, but uh, David escaped and he started running. This is the condition of David while he was running the, writing the psalm. He's been running away from, from King Saul and his army. Saul has been trying to hunt him down. You know, many new, he gets news and he, okay, David is hiding over here. Saul would go after him, and, but uh, David will always escape. And this is the situation. He's been running from Saul, hiding in caves, in the desert, in the wilderness, running from one place to the other, many days without food, many days without water. And that is the situation that we see David in. And that is where he writes the Psalm and asks the question, how long, O oh Lord, how long will you forget me? Many times in our life also, we come across 
situations in life where we are asking God, answer my prayers. I've been longing for, a prayer, uh, for an answer. And God doesn't answer. He keeps you on your knees to pray to him. You may go through struggles in life. We may have troubles in our life, one after the other. You know, some people have physical ailment. You know, legs hurt and I have to work. If I don't work, I will not be able to provide for my family. Even if my leg hurts and I'm supposed to be working with my, working all day, standing on my feet, we just get up and we go and work. Why? Because we have to provide for our family. Back hurts, headaches, constantly headaches. These things come into our life and we may come into a point as David comes and says, how long, oh Lord, how long shall I pray to you? How long shall I wait for an answer from you? We may come into the same situation in our life. You know, Abraham, God promised Abraham that you will have a son. And uh, Abraham waited for a long time. Hannah asked for a son. Year after year, she prayed. And God promised, God did not give a son, she was barren. Many troubles come into Christian's life, but God doesn't answer. You know, he waits and he gives, yeah, everything is done in his own time. And here, David is asking the same question, God, have you forgotten me? Now we can relate to David many times. Many times in our life, we may also have these kind of problems. You know, I may say, you know what, I have plans, but all of a sudden we find our, our loved one sick. And then on top of that, you may find that uh, you are going to lose your job. You know, one storm after the other keeps coming on to our, our lives. And we can easily find ourselves in this situation and asking the same question like David as God, have you forgotten me? Have you forgotten me? We can be also in that same desperate situation. But what does God say? In Isaiah chapter 49, he says this, can a mother forget the baby at her breast? and have no compassion on the child she has born. Though she may forget, I will not forget you. That's what God says. Though she may forget, a mother, you know mother's love. Mothers go for a long sacrifice. They sacrifice their life for their children. But Bible says, God says in the Bible, even if God forgets, even your mother forgets, I will not forget you. I have engraved you in the palm of my hand. Praise be to God. God has never forgotten you. You think he has forgotten you, but he has, he's always loved, he's always there with you. Psalms 103 says to us this, like a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. He's a loving father and he will never forget you. When you pass through the waters, he says, I will be with you and the river shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned and the flame shall not consume you. It is a promise of God, your God, God of the Bible. Trust in God of the Bible. This morning I was speaking to the youths of our church and I went off script a little bit, but I have to encourage them to hone on, to believe in the word of God, to memorize God's scripture daily, maybe one verse on a day, one verse every day, memorize it, because these verses are the ones that will give you strength when you are in trouble. Abraham prayed, Abraham Sarah prayed, God give us a son, you promised. And they're asking this question, how long? How long, O oh Lord, how long? Israel asked for a deliverer, 400 years. They were under the Egyptian yoke of slavery. 400 years they've been praying. Generation after generation they're praying, how long, O oh Lord, how long? How long should I wait over there? How long before a deliverer comes into our life? You know the story of Hannah. Year after year, she used to pray for a son. Oh God, give us a child. Give us a child. Give me a child. Open my womb. Help me, O oh Lord, that I may have a child. And she's praying, how long, O oh Lord, how long? We can find us, ourselves in that situation also. Like, like Abraham and Isaac. Abraham and Sarah, like the Israelites, like Hannah, like other people in the Bible who prayed for a long time before God answered their prayers. You know why the suffering comes? The suffering comes for our edification, to keep us humble and dependent. Our God is the same God. He has never changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. You may be living in a time where you get answers for your question immediately, but if God made Abraham and Sarah wait, if God made the Israelites wait for 400 years, if God made other people wait for, for answers, 
you and I have to wait upon the Lord. Psalms 40 says, I waited patiently for the Lord. Hallelujah. It is teaching us how to keep ourselves humble. You know, we go through afflictions in our life. Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of all. All of them, God delivers them. You may have trouble, you may go through affliction, you may go through sickness, you may go through financial difficulty, you may go through physical ailment, sickness in your life. But many are the afflictions of the righteous. You will have afflictions, Bible says. But the answer is over here, the console, the hope that you have is, but the Lord delivers all of us to all of our troubles. You know, all things happen. The Bible says all things happen together for the good of those who love the Lord. All things, good and bad, hard days and good days, all things happen for those people who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. If you're called according to your pur his purpose, then his purpose is to make you perfect. And he can make you perfect only through struggles in life. You know, the gold is purified through the furnace. It goes through the fire. It's a painful experience for the gold. But in that process, the impurities are taken out and you see perfect gold coming out from the other end. Same thing is happening with you, brothers and sisters. You may go through struggles in life. All these things are happening. You may ask, God, why is this happening? One after the other, one after the other things are happening in my life. Why is this happening? But it is for God's purpose. He's purifying you. He's preparing you for glory. He's removing all the impurities in your life and he's preparing you for eternal life with him forever and ever. You know, your struggle, God knows it. You know, his Bible says he will wipe away every tears of your eyes. God knows your tears. He knows it. He lets you go through it. And the Bible also says, God keeps a record of our tears. He keeps it in a bottle. The Bible says, Psalms 56, verse 8. God keeps our tears in a bottle. And that's why the Bible says, cast all your anxiety on him. Because he cares for you. Do you think he cares for you? He does. You know, the, every breath that you take is by God's grace. If he doesn't allow it, you will fall down and die. But God gives you grace to struggle, go through the struggles in life. And so that we may taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that rejoiceth in him. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. The Bible says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You know, if the Bible says that God of the Bible, God who is truth, if he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you, you can bang on it. You know, you can trust him because he will never leave you. In this world and the world to come, he will never leave you. We may have the question, Abraham and Isaac, Abraham and Sarah asked the question, how long before we have a son, O Lord? You promised us a son. We are old age now. There's no way we can have a son. They prayed and asked the question, how long? Israel prayed, how long, O Lord, how long this misery can go on? Hannah prayed, how long, O Lord, how long? Paul asked question to God, Lord, how long should I have this thorn in my flesh? How long should I continue with this thorn? And God's answer to all these people is this, a little bit longer a little bit longer. You have your praying, and I've heard your prayer, but let me let you go through that process where you are cleansed and you are made pure. A little bit longer, not too long, but a little bit longer. You know, Psalms 34 verse 17 says, when the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them from all their trouble. You will have trouble, and the sovereign God of the Bible brings that trouble into your life. He is sovereign God. He does what he pleases and he will do it in your life. You may pray, 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 but there comes a time when God will answer your prayers. You know, this question of how long, how long? Psalms 13 starts how long? Four times it says how long in the first two verses. And it's not just people ask the question. If you look at the Bible, if it God asks that question, how long, how long? Exodus chapter 16, verse 28 says this. The Lord said to Moses, how long will the Israelites refuse to keep my commandment and my instruction? How long will this wicked community grumble against me? I have heard the complaints of this grumbling Israelites. What is God asking? God is asking this question, how long? And who is he asking to? It is asked to all the people who have yet to bow down their feet before God. Who are, hum who are yet to humble their themselves to God and ask God to become the savior of their life. You may have many plans. 
and all this past may come to an end. God may bring trouble into your life. The Bible says, I stand at the door and knock. If anybody hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and I will have fellowship with him. He's knocking at the door. How long will you wait until you open the door of your life? Now, many of us comes to church every Sunday, but many of us may not be living a Christian life. There are times that we live a hypocritical life. On Sunday, we are all dressed. We come before God to show how good we are. But how are we living every other days of our life? Your life is open before God. Nothing is hidden before him. Psalms 139 clearly tells you, tells us that God sees everything in and through you. Before a thought comes into your mind, he knows it full well. This is the God that we serve. And this gentle God is asking, how long before you bow down your life before me? How long before you surrender your life? God is asking. See this, how long has connection with time? When you say how long, it could be a day, it could be a week, a month, a year, a decade, or a century. How long, how long? God is asking throughout the creation of time. He's asking this question, how long will it take? Well, let me tell you, brother and sister, there comes a time when time has no value. The answer for how long would be forever. You know, the life in this world is 70 or 80 years, the Bible says, and the gist of it is full of trouble. You may go through troubles after trouble. You may make money, you may become rich, but that all is trouble. If you look at it, it's all trouble. I know a person who's rich is worried about his money. A person who doesn't have money, he's worried about how he's going to live his life. You know, there's trouble, there's struggles all the time in life. But there comes a time when time will have no value. And when you ask how long, the answer would be forever. See, there's two destinations for a man. A destination called heaven, a destination called hell. There's two destinations that man will end up. And all those who have bowed down and acknowledged Jesus Christ as their savior, God promises eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And those people who rebel against him and has not bowed down their feet before God, they will be thrown into the lake of fire. Two destinations for all people. Wiser people, let us think about this. It may be, you may think that this is not serious, but it is a serious thing. 200,000 people has already died because of COVID-19. They had a lot of plans in their life. 50 years, 40 years, they worked. And then they thought, hey, we'll have a good retirement. We'll go to Switzerland, we'll go to Paris, on all over the place. But what happened? I heard yesterday that a person who was planning to retire this year died of COVID. He had great plans. But what happened to those plans? Now, these people have plans to live beautiful lives after their retirement. But when we do not know when God is going to call us. But be prepared. Today is a day of grace. Today is a day of salvation. Today is a day of God's favor. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God so that you may have your good life over here and in the days to come with eternal life in Christ in heaven. Hallelujah. So there is a time when we shall enter eternity. Eternity in heaven forever with God or a condemnation forever in hell. The rich man who's in hell, who's under torment, probably asked the question, how long, O oh Lord, how long? It's been a uh, hundred years now. It's been a thousand years, O oh Lord. How long should I go through this torment and agony? And the answer to him is this, forever, forever. You may say, God, enough, man, thousand years, 10,000 years, is that enough? No, no. You have a short life over here. In this short life, what you do, rest your eternity. If you want to live with God in heaven, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. If you rebel and live an atheistic, agnostic, or practical atheistic life, you're going to, live, you're going to be in that torment forever and ever. There is a time coming for everything. Today is a day of salvation, and today is a day of God's favor. Would you humble yourself before God? Psalms 13 starts, how long? Looks like a psalm of frustration. Looks like a psalm where there is no hope. But then three and four, he starts praying to Lord God. He says, consider me and hear my prayer. And due to the lack of time, I'm going to conclude very soon because we have another message coming after this, which I want to know. I don't want to step over that time. So verse five and six says, David says, but I have trusted in your mercy. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. 
I have trusted in your mercy. David is a man who God testifies, a man according to God's own heart. Why is he according to God's heart? Many other tribulation, many other trials, but David looks at his past and looks at his past and finds encouragement how God has helped him in his past. And with that, he gets encouragement. The Bible says, count your blessing. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. You children of God, people of God, you find encouragement in times of trouble by looking at the past history and say, all these days, God help me out. And he is sure to help me out in this. David starts with a complaint and frustration and agonizing situation. But towards the end of the psalm, he finds his confidence in God. He knows God of Abraham and God of Jacob and God of Isaac and Jacob. God was true to them. God was true to Moses. Even God was true to Paul. Hallelujah. God was true to everything in his promise. And this God is going to be true to you and me too. David finds his comfort in looking at the past, counting God's blessings and finding strength in it. If God has said something, he will truly do it. We live in a time of instant gratification, brother. We don't have any more patience in us, but God is teaching you patience when you go through struggles. Life doesn't end over here, life continues. And that's what is more important. Our life in this earth is like a drop in the great ocean. But the great ocean is the eternity. You decide you want to live a life gratifying the flesh, the things of this world, your desires of this world, or you want to live a life pleasing of a God so that we may be found in eternity with God. Dear brothers and sisters, struggle in this world is little bit. How long, how long you may ask, but there's a time coming when God says a little bit longer and he shall always help you out in your trouble. The, 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 the idea behind all this is God is preparing you for eternal bliss. We want to be in heaven with God forever and ever. Psalms 13 starts with how long, but at the end he finds confidence in God. Dear brothers and sisters, let us find confidence in God's promises. In this world, nothing is favorable. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, the Bible says, but God delivers you and me from all these afflictions. Let us trust in, in this God and let us bow down before God so that after we pass away from this God, we shall be with God in heaven, see him face to face and rejoice with him in heaven. May God bless you with this word. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor, for the time.